Is this working? Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. It's a privilege to be here back on stage to tell you all about the, what you can expect about the player interaction experience inside your cockpit. If you like, I've told you before how we've been working towards improving the player interaction experience all across our game. And we wanted to bring these improvements to what happens inside the cockpit. So we wanted to give you a greater immersion and Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the slides on. <laughs> Sorry about that. Yeah. So you want to give you a greater immersion and have and give you a closer experience to what pilots go through in real life. Not only when you're flying around your ship, but the moment you take your seat at the cockpit. So to achieve this, we've created. A when you enter your ship, you'll be put in what do we call a new relax pose. So in this pose, you'll have free look enabled, so you can easily look around the cockpit and your dashboard. <laughs> the prompts will be showing over the button, so you can easily find the ones you have to interact. And you, the pilot, have to press all the different buttons to get your ship ready for flying, and the character hands will be lowered away from the control stick. So all of this blends neatly into our new player animated interaction system, whereby any button is now physically pressed. So this new system uses what we call a CDIK approach. This stands for Code-Driven IK, or Inverse Kinematics, and gives full control of the IK setup to the code. So this, among other things, allows us to record the path of the hand relative to its target. So we can have more detailed animations than just simply blending the hand into position. So for example, we can open a flap and then press the button. But you know, enough of me talking, let's go jump into the demo and see all of this in action. So now. So Brand very kindly will get us into the ship while you'll see the new enter sequence. And you'll see the new animations we have been working on. So you can see now that you won't directly grab the control stick. You'll be put onto this free, on this relax pose with free look enabled. And you can see the different prompts appear over the buttons. So let's get this show started and get your ship ready for flying. So Brand, if you could close the canopy so we don't go flying around with that open. Power our systems. And look at that. You just pop out the system. And finally, turn our engines. Yeah, so we, uh, you are now ready for flying. So we will be, be bringing all of this to all of our ships in our fleet. And that's all from me. So please walk, join me in welcoming to the stage Tony to tell you all about the new UI. Hi everyone, my name is Tony. I'm senior UI programmer here at CIG. And I'm here to explain some of the spoilers that you saw yesterday about our new ship UI. So, are you ready to see the ship UI in action? Yeah. <laughs> right. Bone, play the demo. The, I mean, Brandt, continue with the demo. So, as you can see already, this ship has less intrusive UI with more space to enjoy the stunning vistas that planets can offer and less clutter views so you can focus during combat. This also means that the UI elements are now more relevant to the situation, linked to the operator mode. For example, when we change to scan mode, the crosshair has scanning information about your target and even the MFDs have changed. Some of these elements can be customized, but we'll see more about that later. For this demo, we're showing the UI developed for this Gladius. Basic information related to navigation will always be available on your view, and this Gladius displays all of that with holograms around the dashboard. But other ships may have different layouts and styles, on brand with the manufacturer. For example, the Drake that makes more affordable ships, rather than fancy and probably expensive holograms, may use physical screens, dials, and light indicators. 
This dashboard shows your current speed, the remaining afterburn, and some decoys available. On both far sides, we have status indicators that will show things like if you landed gear is on or any, any other flight systems. Worth mentioning that we have prototyped these for the demo, so right now they're holograms, but on the final design, these are going to be physical screens. On the far left, on the top of the dashboard, we have the indicator of which master mode and operator mode are you on. So let's change that to combat and talk about these new MFDs. So, we have reworked all of these MFDs from scratch with brand new views using our UI technology building blocks. We can still navigate through these MFDs using the classic mouse interaction, holding F and then moving the mouse. On the left here, we can see the scanning view, which is going to show information that you obtain when you scan a target. It may show information about the ship name, the pilot name, or even the current operator mode of your target, so you know if they're just chilling around or they are ready to fight you. Cycling to the left one, we have the target status, which will focus on emissions, damage, and orientation of your target. We'll see that in action later. The next one, continuing to the left, will be the self-status, which is contextual. So during navigation, that will show your current fuel, but during combat, like right now, will show information about your guns. You can click on the gun, and you can see basic information about that. You will see the name, and you can also see in which group they are assigned, which Yogi will explain later. On the MFD on the right side, we have the power management, where we can distribute the power of different systems of the ship. You can click on the triangle and move it around to change the distribution, and you can turn down the total power of the ship that will generate. The classic key bindings that you all know already works, so when you change the power management, you will see now a triangle on top of the radar to show you the changes. Now, instead of using mouse, you can also use key bindings to select MFDs and cycle through the views, which might be faster when you are in certain situations like during combat. And for those pro players out there, we have added about a hundred key bindings, and I mean a hundred, to navigate through all of these systems, so you can fully customize how you want to navigate through them. And I really hope that's more than enough to use on your keyboard, on your HOTAS, or even on your game class setup. But if you need more, just let us know. Anyway, I think you're not going to need even those many shortcuts. For this operator mode, we now persistently save which views are shown on each MFD. So you can customize what's important to you for every situation. So as an example, during combat, you might want to have target information on your MFDs, but maybe when you change to quantum travel, have your current fuel, spend some time on the configuration screen, for example. Let's talk about this configuration screen. We're going to have now here a variety of options, from customizing UI elements to enable systems of the ship. We may see some of these later in action with Yogi. These settings are now available on this screen, not in the global settings of the game, for quick access. So just as a warning, expect changes on the settings that you already know, but we'll tell you all about it when we have it ready. And the important bit about this is that they will persist to your ship. So you can keep different setup of which UI elements and even ship systems enable for how you personally use each of your ships. Now, some of you might be thinking that these Gladius settings have enough MFDs. Can we enable the top setting? For those of you that you want to see even more information, you can now cast versions of these MFDs to your helmet. For this, you're going to need to equip the appropriate helmet, so it's connected to your ship and get, I can get all this information. You can use the key bindings, as I mentioned before, so you can select which cast you want to control and how to cycle through them. So you can pin views that are important to you with, with your, that will move with your camera. So as you have seen, if you're aiming at the target or if you're moving with your head tracker, those views are going to be always with you. 
With all these tools, you can customize your experience and have it ready for every situation that you encounter with your ship, always displaying the relevant information to you. So for example, during combat, you may want to have all the UI elements enabled, all the pips, all the crosshairs, so the information of your ship on the physical MFDs, and maybe focus on the target information on your cast, so they're always on your view. But maybe when you go to quantum travel, you can turn those casts off so you can enjoy the vistas. That's all for me. Now we have MFDs ready, and let me bring Yogi back to tell you all about flying your ship. Thank you very much.